The MMA Discussion Podcast is brought to you by SportsOfAnarchy.com. Visit our site for all your sporting news and needs. We're also brought to you by SubmissionFC.com. Enter the promo code SportsOfAnarchy10 for 10% off the best Brazilian jiu-jitsu gear. We're also brought to you by the Flex Belt. Summer is approaching fast. If you want to strengthen and tone your abs, the Flex Belt, which is FDA cleared, might just be for you. Follow the link in the description below to get your very own. The MMA Discussion Podcast is now available to listen to on iTunes, the podcast radio app Stitcher, and SoundCloud, all of which are available on all smartphone devices. Ladies and gentlemen, this is our 39th episode of the MMA Discussion Podcast, and we have a very special guest with us, John, the Bull McDessy, UFC lightweight, who just recently competed at UFC 186, got a highlight reel knockout, and will now compete at UFC 187 against Donald Cowboy Cerrone. John, how you doing, man? So awesome to have him us on. Usually I'm joined by my co-host uh, Chris Pagman, but he's unable to make it, and so I am joined for his first go around at this. Jonas, what's up, man? Hey, what's going on, man? And uh, glad to have you on. To join me and uh, John. Big weekend you had um, not too long ago at UFC 186. You had a, a tremendous uh, performance against Stephen Campbell, who did take the fight on short notice, and you uh, you, you looked fantastic. You looked uh, ready to go and what a highlight you had. Talk to us about that fight and what that fight meant for you. Yeah, I mean, uh, it, was, it was, you know, I'm very blessed for, for able to go out there and just kind of perform the way I wanted to perform. You know what I mean? And it just everything came, came into play. You know what I mean? I had a tremendous uh, training camp and just just everything, all the build up from the whole year, of, 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 uh, you know, the whole uh, being on the sideline for a whole year and just restructuring my whole team, restructuring, you know, getting, getting, Getting back the love for the sport and just kind of uh, figuring out, you know, what exactly I, I wanted to to pursue in, in mixed martial arts and, and kind of just, you know, what I mean. Okay, and uh, in regards to that uh, finish on Shane Campbell at uh, 186, uh, tell me how that uh, how or if uh, the decision that Alan Patrick had against you at 169 if that had anything to do with your approach to uh, the last fight you were part of? Um, well, you know what? Uh, prior to my last fight, you know, uh, the, in New Jersey, I mean, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, you know, I, I went back home, I watched the fight, and I truly believe in my heart that I won that fight. You know what I mean? I, I pushed the pace agree. and counter. Sorry? I would agree. Sorry to interrupt, oh. but I would absolutely agree with you. Yeah, 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 you know what I mean? I did listen. I did, I did, you know what? If the guy was a better man, I would take off my hat for him shake his hand and say good fight but at the end of the day also uh, also I truly believe you know what I mean like I said I, I watched the fight and I just didn't I just in my heart I found that I, I won the fight you know what I mean I pushed the pace I, I countered I, I, I landed more shots than, than he did but you know what MMA is, is, is totally a brand new sport uh, I'm very aware that most judges are not even they don't even understand how to score a fight you know what I mean and, and this is why you know this is why I learned People always say, you know, don't don't leave it up to the judge. Just, you know what I mean? But then they have, of course, I mean, we're, we're two professional fighters. You know what I mean? It's not like he's going to stand there and, and trade with me because, you know, majority of fighters, if they study me, they, they, they know that if they try to engage with me, they're going to get caught. Mm -hmm. you know, and this is why a lot of guys, they try to play the point system mm -hmm. on me. You know, it makes it a boring fight for the fans. You know, and ultimately, my goal as a fighter is to do, is not only to be uh, one of the best fighters in the world, but to also be uh, a unique fighter and to also give the fans an exciting fight. You know, and because at the end of the day, we're also entertainers, and, and and I'm very aware of that. And that's why my goal is to try to make it as, as entertaining as possible. But it also takes two guys to dance. You know, if one guy does not show up to the, one guy doesn't show up to the dance, it's gonna be a boring fight. Understood. And uh, one of the things about this fight that um, that I really uh, w that that we really focus on is your your intent to finish was um, knowing that, or, or do you have a different approach to your fights? And and also, do you feel like um, that this will be your approach in your upcoming fight? Or um, knowing that we've uh, we've talked about it plainly thus far that you will be competing against Donald Cerrone. You took that fight on short notice. Um, will that be your approach in this fight? But to be very honest, you know what? Uh, I don't, I don't look at it like I took it as short notice. I look at it like opportunity knocked on my door. You know, I got, I got an opportunity to, 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 to fight a top name. And at the end of the day, for me, it's about to be the best. I gotta fight the best. And I found that, you know, it could have come to a better time. You know, my last fight, I look at it as a warm up. You know, I'm very, I was 
very fortunate that it was just one round. I'm, I'm still healthy. You know, what I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm still, uh, you know, I, I don't, you know, I've been training for all, all my life. You know, all my life I've been training for, for for an opportunity like this. You know, things like this don't come often. You know, what I mean, and, you know, at the end of the day, when the UFC asked me to fight, you know, what I mean, I don't really have an option. You know, what I mean, because at the end of the day, I gotta, I gotta show the UFC that that I want to take a run at the title. You know, and it couldn't come more, and you know, this couldn't come more. Than a better time for me, you know, uh, physically, mentally, you know, spiritually. I find that every everything is 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 to get coming together for me. I truly believe that you know I have my own system. I, I figure out, I figure out like you know I have, I have a good formula that's been working for me. And I, at the end of the day, you know, the only thing I can do is enjoy the journey and, and just trust my skills. You know, believe in my training, believe in my team, and, and just go out there and do what I do best. Terrific. Do you um. Uh... Uh, go ahead, Jones. So, uh, to piggyback on that, uh, let's say you do beat Donald Cerrone. Uh, is RDA next? Is Rafael Dos Anjos next on the list? Do you think that warrants a title shot? Yeah, you know, you know what? For me, I never really uh, like. I don't. I don't really focus on the actual opponent. I just focus on. You know, what I mean, at the end of the day, you know, that, that at the end of the day, you know, what I mean, everybody's dangerous. I don't look at. I don't look at, I don't try, I don't pick my fighters, you know, I, I, that's the UFC, that's their, you know, they, they, I never chose my opponents, I never really picked my opponents, you know, I always, I always had to fight whoever they gave me, for me, it's not even about, you know, I, I'm looking through everything, I'm looking, I'm just, the only thing I'm focusing to be the best I can be, and, and I'm focusing on the belt, you know, every day I look at that, I, I look, at, that's my goal is to get to the championship belt, you know, I'm, I'm 30 years old, you know what I mean, I have a small, small window of opportunity, and, and I tell myself, and I, I keep telling myself, you know what, you know, you know, it, it is what it is, and, and I'm gonna try, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try, I'm gonna die trying to, to get to that, to get to my goals, you know, and my, my goals is, is to be a world champion, my goals is to have, to, to leave a legacy, and, and to be one of the most exciting fighters in the world. Excellent. That's very excellent. You mentioned being 30, and uh, we'll just point out today is your birthday. Congratulations. Happy birthday, John. <laughs> Thank you. Much love. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not such a big birthday, birthday guy. Sorry? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you have you happen to be my sister's birthday twin. <laughs> oh, nice. Well, happy oh. birthday to your sister. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Just going off of uh, what, what Jonas was saying, you know, I mean, uh, as many people don't agree with that last uh, decision loss of yours against Alain Patrick, um, you know, uh, talk to us about this fight now with Donald Cerrone. I know that this is obviously a very important fight. Um, it, it actually seems to make sense considering off, coming off of this fight, you know, you, you, got, it, you got it done in one round. Um, you call it a warm-up, and that's actually uh, – I've always looked at taking fights on short notice somewhat beneficial because then you don't focus too much on what you shouldn't be focusing on. You know what I mean? Like taking fights that take a long time to come sometimes uh, can 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 get um, disheartening on a fighter mentally. And uh, with you being able to just take this fight in the next three weeks uh, might benefit you, in my opinion. So with that being said, um, you know how do you, how are you going to approach this fight? What will you approach to a guy as aggressive and and uh, and uh, and tactical um, on his feet uh, as Donald Cerrone. What's your uh, what's your game plan here? So basically, uh, you know, for 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 my game plan for Donald Cerrone, you know, I mean, I truly believe that at the end of the day, for me, just to focus on uh, what I have to do, you know, uh, believe believe in my skills and, and go out there and uh, be the aggressor. Well, the guy has uh, as um. Uh, he he has the height, strength or, or not the strength, the uh, reach advantage. Um, do you plan on having to re utilize foot knit, footwork and speed in this fight? Well, I mean, I mean, oh, this is not the, this is not my first. Uh, this is not my first guy. You know, I mean, UFC for some reason they love putting me up with guys who have always, uh, you know, high, height advantage, reach advantage. He's not the first guy that I, that I fought with a, with, a, with a higher advantage. You know, I, I've proven, I've proven in my, in my last, uh, in my my previous fights that, uh, you know, I, I, I can I can handle myself pretty good versus guys bigger than me. You know, and uh, and also I'm not worried because you know I, I try to start gym. You know, I have, I have I have multiple guys that can st simulate his style. You know, I'm getting ready for his style. 
and and the funny part is that my last opponent, Shane Campbell, was also a tall fighter and also was a Thai, uh, is, is a is a is a Muay Thai fighter style. You know, so so you know what? Like I said, you know, I truly believe that uh, you know, you know, as a professional fighter, you're gonna be ready for anything. You know, and this is that's what I focus on. It's just cover all angles, you know, be ready for whatever happens and, and, and just let my body take over, you know, let my instincts take over that night, you know what I mean? Uh, training, training every day, six, seven hours a day, doing a lot of repetition, you know, it's, for, you know, it's a lot of people don't understand how much preparation comes, goes behind the fighting, how much work it takes, you know, with, with, with everything. And, you know, I dedicated my whole life to, to mixed martial arts, you know, since the age of six, I've been competing, you know what I mean? So, so you know what, you know, it's, it's not... I, I'm, you know, I'm just gonna go out there, and, and I'm not taking this fight any any bigger than what it is. It's, it's another fight, and uh, I'm just gonna go out there and, and give the fans an exciting fight. You know, I truly believe that. You know, if if uh, you know, if if he's if he's if he's uh, you know, if he wants to engage with me, if he's willing to engage with me, it was gonna be an exciting fight, just like how I proved to my last fight. You know, every fighter. You know, I, I, Shane Campbell, I respect him. He's a top competitor. And he, he engaged with me, you know, it, it made it a, a exciting fight for the fans, you know. But if Donald Cerrone tries to try try to take me down for, for, for three, five minute rounds, it's going to be a boring fight, you know. At the end of the day, you know, styles make fights, you know. If the guy is willing to engage, it's going to be an exciting fight. If the guy is, if the guy is going to run around for five minutes and try to play the point game, it's going to be a boring fight. Fair enough. Fair enough. I wanted to ask you also specifically to um, this fight because you're taking on such short notice. Um, I wanted to ask you um, how kept in shape are you, and uh, you know what are you going to uh, do to uh, cut weight for this fight? I know that you you cut weight successfully. You've never been a guy that has problems with that, and so we just wanted to get in get in on the on the success of that. I mean, uh, do you, how do you, how is it when you cut weight, and um, you know, are there any differences coming up into a fight that you're going to be taking on short notice? Yeah, well, well, well uh, you know what, actually, in, in my past, I, I did actually struggle with, uh, struggle in my weight cutting, you know, struggling, at, you know, the, for, for me, the most important thing is, you know, weight cutting is always the, the worst, that's the worst thing, that's the worst thing about when it comes to the fighting, you know, the, the weight cutting, the process of weight cutting is, is, is horrible, you know, uh, it, it's the, the things that fighters have to go through for the weight cut, you know, it, it's, it's horrible, you know, that being said, you know, uh, I'm very, I'm very blessed. I'm very fortunate. You know, I, I started working with a guy. Uh, in now five fights. You know, I, I knew him for, four, for a few years now. You know, his name is Ben Hoffman. He has a business in Jersey called In Motion Meals. You know, this guy's been tremendous. You know, he's, he's a tremendous guy. A part of my, he's a part of my team, and he's, he's, he's been very helpful. You know, he, this guy, you know, made me change my whole perspective when it came it comes to nutrition. You know, just not, not only about the, the weight cutting process, but also the, the most important is to keep me healthy and keep me strong, so I'm able to train hard and and also do cut weight. You know, I mean, that, and that was the hard part. You know, a lot of guys, a lot of guys focus only on the weight cutting and they kind of forget about the, the performance and the, the training. You know, and, and this is why I find that Ben Hoffman, you know, when it comes to nutrition, when it comes to performance, when it comes to weight. He's the best in the world, you know. I mean, he he understands what the athlete needs. He understands, you know, what the athlete need, needs in the sense of, of, of to fuel the body, you know, for it for, for it to, to function in, in a high level, you know. So I'm able to go out there and be healthy and and, and fight a, a strong fight. Fantastic, and um, I'll, I'll, we'll get a we'll give a shout out to Ben Hoffman uh, for you know. For, I mean, does is he, does he work specifically with guys up there in TriStar? Is he National. Actually, the, actually, the funny part is he, he lives in the, he, 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 right now he's, he's living in Texas. He lives in Texas. Uh, he doesn't work with. Uh, actually, he, he he's very selective. You know, I'm, I'm very like I said, I'm very fortunate. This guy takes the time. This guy this guy this guy actually takes the time to to, to work with me. You know, he doesn't need to work with me. He, this guy is he's, he's a well established man. You know, he has a, a good business. He has he works for other athletes. He works with NFL players. He works with baseball players. He works with bodybuilders. Wow. Uh, yeah, I mean, this guy actually he actually mm. he chooses to work with me, and this is why I'm very grateful for him. You know, and and I'm very appreciative. You know, this guy goes out of his way to, to make sure that I'm, I'm, I'm healthy, I'm strong, and, and I'm, I'm able to cut weight properly, and, and, and 
and uh, you know this guy you know he means the world to me and uh, and the funny part is we never really met like we never saw each other in person everything's through phone and texting so that, that that's another funny part this guy, <laughs> this guy this guy never saw me physically but yet he knows exactly you know what to make me eat and he knows exactly how much my weight is going to be you know this guy i call him the magician you know this yeah guy, i was about to say guy, he's a magic man this guy is a magic man <laughs> <laughs> awesome. You ever plan on coming down to Texas? I mean, yeah, of course. Man. I hope. I hope. You know. I mean. I mean. Uh, you know. Of course. You know. I be honest with you. I didn't have time to, to kind of. You know. To be honest with you. You know. Just my last fight. I fought Saturday. You know. I only took out four days. Four days of right. rest. Back to training. Yeah. Back to diet. I mean. Be honest with you. I didn't even feel like I didn't even have time to 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 kind of to kind of soak in my last fight. You know. Now I'm getting ready for 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 another fight. You know I mean, I, this is this is the life. This is the story of a fighter. You know, we we we, we live it, we breathe it. We, we have to, you know, it's a lifestyle. You know, we do. There's a lot of sacrifices that comes behind becoming a pro athlete. You know, a lot of responsibilities that people don't really recognize. You know, it's not just go and fight. You know, there's a lot of things behind the scenes that people don't see what we go through. You know, and the, this is this is the life I chose. This is you know what I mean. And at the end of the day, you know, I'm a professional fighter, and I gotta I gotta you know, I gotta focus on. You know, taking care of business and and, and, uh, and just being smart and uh, you know just keep keep doing what I'm doing and, and, and you know see see where it goes. Yeah. All right, awesome, awesome. I, just another question. Um, I know you spend a lot of time preparing and training and being a fighter, but uh, how much of a fight fan are you? Do you, is there anybody in particular that you watch or like to watch fighting? <clears throat> you know, you know, it's, it's, it's funny to be honest with you because. You know, to be honest, I, I do watch fights. You know, of course, you know, I, I, I you know, to do. I'm not, I'm not too much into. Because the thing about me is that it's all the, the switch is always on. You know, when I'm watching fights, I'm, I'm doing, I'm kind of, I'm studying. You know, it's not right. for, for me yeah. to step back to kind of as a fan. You know, it's hard for me to look at it as a fan. Just to the fights. I had I had moments that as a fan, you know, of course, uh, you know, I always like to watch. You know, I was a big fan of Anderson Silva. You know, I was a big fan of a uh, big fan of Micro Cro Cup. You know, I would sit back and watch them fight. You know, as a, as as a as a fan and you know, either inspiration. You know, either. at the end of the day, this is why I try to you know I try to emulate. You know, as a role model. You know, at the end of the day, every fight, every everyone fears a, a, a great striker. You know, and everybody respects a striker. You know, everyone loves a striker. You know, I mean, at the end of the day, strikers, you know, make f- make fights exciting. You know, wh- why do people go to to a, to a fight? Because they w- they want to see knockouts. They want to see something spectacular. You know, they don't, they don't. Nobody wants to see a you know a 50 minute fight. You know, two guys holding each other, grappling. You know, what I mean, at the end of the day, you want to see a grappling match. Go to a, a jiu jitsu tournament. You know, what I mean, this is this is this is combat. This is we're in a competitive sport. This is this is blood sport. This is the hardest sport in the world. You know, so so you know, what I mean, it's not it's not jiu jitsu. It's a, it's a it's mixed martial arts. You know, what I mean, so at the end of the day, you know, I, I try to do something different. You know, I try to make an exciting fight. This is why I work very very hard to make an exciting fight in, 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 the, in the gym. You know. And I wanted to ask you about you that. Take of, oh. You gotta take a lot of risks. Yeah, I, w- I wanted to ask you about that. Your time, you know, you're, 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 uh, you're training with TriStar Gym in preparation for this fight. I mean, uh, talk to us about that. Talk to us about um, the atmosphere at TriStar, um, the work that you uh, that you've been doing there, and uh, you know how it's benefited you thus far at this point in your career. Yeah, this, this, the, the thing about TriStar, where I always tell people, you know, TriStar is a gym where you're gonna your your skills are gonna be put to the test. You know, when you go when you walk into TriStar, you're surrounded by Everyone is a fighter. Everybody is f- fighters. You know what I mean? You're, you got boxers. You got Muay Thai fighters. You got grapplers. You got wrestlers. You got. You, there's so many different types of bodies. You have so many different types of styles and disciplines. So, so TriStar is, is a true mixed martial arts gym. You know, when it comes to when, when you're looking for just pure rawness. You know, when you're looking for different body types. You know, and this is why this is why TriStar. You know, for me, I find that I'm able to go there. Know, and have multiple different body types uh, and, and I'm, I'm able to spar with different people constantly and, and everybody gives me a different look you know everyone has a different look and this is this is why this is why trust is, is important because every week I'm, I'm sparring with different people every week I'm, I'm they, they throw in the you know I'm, I'm, I'm 
training with guys with different body types, different different uh, styles. So it keeps me sharp and it keeps me alert and be and, and able to adjust and adapt to whatever comes my way. Awesome. Um, which which training partners do you think um, for this fight you'll be working with closely and the most to be able to pair for Cerrone? He's actually fighting in two weeks. His name is uh, Cajun Johnson. He's, uh, I don't know if you've heard of him. Yeah, yeah, Johnson. yeah. Um, he was off the Ultimate Fighter. And, yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. He's uh, uh, an amazing, amazing training partner. You know, a lot of talent. This guy's a veteran. He has a lot of fights under his belt. You know, just like Donald Cerrone has a lot of. Yeah, I believe Cajun's and, in and, the. Uh... You know, no, yeah, I was about to say, I believe Cajun's in the 30 fight realm, correct? Uh, yeah, something like that. A lot of experience. This mm -hmm. guy's been doing mixed martial arts much longer than I have been, you know? Uh, yeah, you know, having guys like that in the gym, you know, guys, uh, a, lot of, a, a lot of other guys, guys from, uh, some other guys from different disciplines like Muay Thai, working with some Muay Thai guys, you know, working with some uh, freestyle wrestlers, Olympic wrestlers, working with uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu guys. You know, my game, my goal is to cover all angles, you know, and I, I go to, I, I work with different guys, different disciplines on purpose, because I, I like to focus on some different, uh, I, I'm more of a guy that I, I try to plan my work, you know, and set them, you know, I, I want to work with the best, uh, I want to I wanna work with the best, uh, best of the best, you know, I, I go to the wrestling, I train with wrestlers, I, I train with grapplers, and I train with MMA guys, I train with uh, Thai guys, I train with boxers. So, so I'm able to, to get the best out of every discipline, and, and, and so I'm able to put it all together. Awesome. Um, well, Jonas, did you have any more questions before we move on to any uh, fan questions? Um, no, I'm, I'm all good on, on my end. Well, John, we actually had uh, some, some of the fans of our page and website um, ask them some questions if you were down to answer any of those, yeah? Yeah, 100%, of course. Awesome. So this comes from a... Uh, a Shannon Neal, if I got that right, hopefully. Um, she asked, uh, where do you feel um, in this fight you're most comfortable with Cerrone, and if you win, do you get a title shot? Um, we already asked you about the title shot part, so just answer the first part, yeah. I guess. Yeah. Sorry? Yeah, yeah. Well, um, yeah. you know what? I'm, I'm not focusing on the process right now, to be honest with you. I'm not taking too ahead of myself. Uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm very superstitious, like, no, I don't like to. Too <laughs> you know, I'm not. I'm not trying to focus too much on the fight right now. You know, yeah. I mean, right now, my focus is on 200 feet at a time, focusing on you know taking care of business every day, and uh, you know, and, and let the fight come. The fight comes. You know, the fight is gonna come. You know what I mean? So, so I'm not really worried about too much of the fight right now. I'm focusing on me and, and just being the best. Uh, you know, get get ready for for uh, for my next fight, and uh, you know, and then after that, we'll see what happens. And then we got also from Twitter uh, comes it's <laughs> it's Charlie now, which is funny. It's actually a picture of Charlie Sheen. We got a question asking: Do you feel when you get in there, um, your nerves sink in, or do you just zone out and become a complete fighter? Hmm. It's a hot question. Yeah, well, well, yeah, well, my, I mean, nervous. I'm always gonna be nervous. You know? That's the for me. It's, nervous is. Uh, it's always there, you know. At the end of the day, nervous when you start, you know. At the end of the day, you know, I, I learned through working with peak performance. One of my one of my coaches is Brian Kane, and another another tremendous guy, a part of my team. You know, when it comes to the mental game, you know, he he, he is a big contributor. You know, uh, you know, he helped me with the, my mental game, and, and a lot of people kind of forget about the mental game. It's more important than physical because at the end of the day, uh, you know, especially in this type of in this type of blood sport. You know, it's all mental. You know, everything is mental. You know, the the the, the battles within the within the mind. You know what I mean? Uh, that being said, you know, my nerves and all that stuff is it's always gonna be there. I can't control it. That's that's me being human. But but I, I don't focus on that. I focus on the task at hand, and I, and I, I act different than how I feel. You know, and, and this is how I'm able to go out there and just let my body. You know, I kind of let my body take over when, when I'm in that cage, you know, and, and let everything that I work in the gym come out. This one comes from uh, Danny Takai. Um, shout out to John McTessie, one of my favorite fighters. Um, do you pl do you predict a knockout or do you predict a three-round war? Obviously, you're not looking that far into the fight, so I don't know if you want to answer that one. Yeah, I mean, I mean you know what? That's, you know, it's 
Just I, I, as much as I would love to go out every fight and knock the guy out and make it a spectacular fashion. I mean, of course, that's that's the best scenario for any fight, you know. What I mean? But I'm also, uh, you know, I'm also being really realistic in the sense of, you know, I'm, I'm fighting another well-trained professional athlete. You know what I mean? So, so uh, you know, for me, my goal is to go out there and, and give the fans an exciting fight. You know what I mean? So for for me, it's all about performance. You know, and if if, if that happens. The knockout comes. If, if the knockout is there, I'll go for a knockout. If it's not there, I'm always gonna try to, to make an exciting fight. You know, that's that's the best answer I can give you. It's a good one. Um, yeah, honestly, that's something you have not failed to do in my time watching you fight. To be fair, so <laughs> I yeah. you definitely win or lose, you definitely put it on. You have you definitely uh, throw it all out there, and that's all that we as fans can really ask of any fight. Definitely, and um, I think you know, a, yeah. a lot of times, uh, even when fights go to the ground, I feel like, yeah, yeah, even when fights go to the ground and you have people booing, and you guys have to understand these are fighters, and these are guys trying to fight their fight the way they need to to win. And there's more to it than just making people bleed, you know, all that good stuff. So that's how I see it. But you just make it exciting just because of how you train and how you can approach the fight. At the end of the day, you know what I mean. Uh, everybody's gonna do what they gotta do to win the fight, but yep. I, I focus on 100% effort. You know, my goal is to to give my. If I'm able to go out there and give myself 100% effort, then 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 for me, win or lose, you know, for me, my that, that's the most important thing. Is because winning or losing is out of my control. You know what I mean? That's that's I can't focus on the outcome. You know what I mean? But but what I can focus is on. The only thing that I can control is the process and, and, and being 100%, giving my 100% effort. You know, and if I go out there and give my 100% effort mentally, physically, then then I truly believe that you know, you know, that's how I'm gonna win the fight. Awesome. This one comes from uh, an Alejandra Reyes. What has been your favorite uh, knockout thus far? You have uh, about 10 in your career. Which one being your favorite? Trust you, uh, every fight. Something you know, every fight I take it very serious. You know, all my fights, I, I always you know try my best. Um, but you know what? Of course, I mean, of course, I mean, listen, I won't lie to you. I, everybody knows me as a spinning back fist. You know, spinning back fist. Yeah. Is, uh, the only reason why I say that that's gonna be one of my one of the, my best knockouts, not because of the actual knockout, is because the actual just just the whole everything you know being in in the Toronto being in the first time in the Rogers Center you know over 55,000 people in attendance you know uh, and uh, just the whole the, the way I set up the the way I set up the spinning back fist you know I was uh, for, for the first two rounds I was I was you know setting him up and then he I, I, actually came all together in the last round and uh, you know that's like hitting the, the, the something like that doesn't come often you know that, that comes one in a lifetime you know I mean that's like hitting the lottery you know, the way the way I was able to set that up and, and the way I was able to finish it with the spinning the spinning back fist was was uh, you know it was great it was great to see you know I mean you, you work so hard in the gym and you kind of you know uh, you know uh, then you you're able to go out there and actually put it all together you know it's, it's a great feeling you know of course of course you know I mean uh, I always feel bad you know I, I told I'm fortunate that you know it is a brutality sport it is a brutal sport you know I, I always wish good upon my my opponents I always respect my opponents and. You know, I, I never wish any harm to any of my opponents. You know, I mean, unfortunately, it's the name of the game, and uh, and you know, I was just happy to be able to go out there, you know, at the Rogers Center, uh, and be able to to uh, you know throw that you know, to get that spinning back fist. I remember the setup to that. You had actually been uh, you, you know throw, throwing leg kicks, hitting low for about two straight rounds, and you were winning those two rounds, and you could have gotten a decision had it gone there, but you were setting it up so perfectly with the with the leg kicks and, and low shots that uh, he just kept looking down, and once you finally were able to fake a, 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 an attempt, and then boom, there it was, and I was just in awe of it. It's certainly one of the greater highlights of your uh, career. Um, and, uh, man, I kind of want to see it again. <laughs> um, for me, uh, from... Uh, I'm very excited that if anybody was to take this fight against Donald Cerrone, it was you. Uh, you're one of the most exciting fighters in the game, not just at lightweight, but in the UFC period. And uh, I think I speak for both Jonas and everybody else in my crew who uh, who agrees who would agree with that. It's going to be an exciting fight regardless. 
both you men are uh, are at the top of the sport right now, and it, it couldn't have come at a better time, as you've put it, because um, you know you guys have such hot momentum going into a, a fight uh, on one of the biggest cards of the year. You, that's got to be exciting for you, and uh, and that's all the fan questions we have. And we, I just want to say thank you for coming on. We appreciate you, and uh, of course for this fight, it's going to be one of the most exciting on the card that everybody talks about, and. Um, and for uh, Jonas, anything else you want to ask before we go on out of here? Uh, again, I know you're not looking for it or whatnot, but I, I honestly hope you, if you beat Don Cerrone, I really think the UFC should go on and give you the title shot. That's my, that's my own personal endorsement there. <laughs> I really appreciate, it. I really appreciate, it, man. I want to thank you guys for, for giving me the time, and uh, I want to thank you know, I just want to thank everybody, my team, my spot, everybody who supports me, my fans. And you know my sponsors, you know everyone who supports me. I wanna, I wanna thank everybody, you know, from my heart. And uh, you know, this means a lot to me. This, you know, I dedicate my whole life to this. And and, uh, and you know, I, I, I want, I want the fans to know. I want everyone to know that when, I, when every time I go out there, for me, it's like life or death. And uh, you know, I, I'm always gonna try to go out there and give the fans an exciting fight. Well, we appreciate that. I mean, that's all we can ever ask for you. And you've certainly got two fans here. Um, and uh, and everybody else listening, I hope uh, you know this is gonna be a great fight. Can't wait, man! And uh, where can people reach you on social media if they want to get hold of you? Yeah, man. Uh, Facebook is, is John the Bull McDessie. Uh, Instagram, you know, same thing, John the Bull McDessie. And uh, uh, Twitter, you know, John McDessie MMA. And uh, you know, uh, you can always hit me up messages from my fans. You know, on my Facebook, my fan page. I'm always, uh, I'm always out. You know, when it comes to my fans. For me, I'm, I'm always gonna give time for my fans. You know, they're the ones who, who, who are, I'm able to go out there and, and do what I always dreamed about. You know, so I'm very appreciative for, for all my fans and everyone who supports me. So you guys can, you know, anytime you can contact me, it'll be my pleasure. Uh, awesome, John. And then one one last question, just a real small one, because I, I always ask all my my uh, my guests who have the uh, who have nicknames. Where did you get the nickname the Bull? Where did that come from? It certainly <laughs> coincides with your style. <laughs> Back in the back in early 2000, 2005 or 2003, between 2000 and uh, in, my, in the early 2000s, you know, uh, I was a kickboxer. I was an American kickboxer. I was a Canadian kickboxer. I was uh, I was pursuing kickboxing, and I was an amateur. And I was uh, and I was just you know I, I, I was always competing in kickboxing in, in, in the Canada, you know, in local co competitions, and also uh, and I was doing very well. I became a, I became a, I, I won a, a title. Undefeated, and uh, um, actually, my sister, my, my my sister, she came to one of my fights in my amateur careers, and she just kind of had the, she had a big poster saying uh, "Go Bull Go," and uh, and uh, because I'm a Taurus, I'm a Toro, and I guess because me being stubborn and, and me not really <laughs> me being just not scared to get hit, you know, uh, my family always thought they always thought I was crazy, you know, in that sense, because I was always uh, all my life since a kid, I, I was always I was always walking fire you know I, I would always everybody would turn everybody would walk the other way and I would just go into the fire you know I mean I was just that was just, I, that was my character you know I mean I guess my stubbornness or my crazy side you know and, and I guess and, and because I'm my birthday is May and I'm a tourist so I guess everything together you know and next thing you know everybody starts calling me the bull and I just I just went with it you know what I mean so that's how it started awesome well, John, again, from uh, from us here at MMAD, we're big fans. Can't wait to see this fight on uh, May 26th at um, UFC 187. Going to be a terrific card, and you just make it an even more excellent um, uh, addition to the card. And we can't wait to see you, man. And have, uh, you know, uh, happy training, and we can't wait to see you, man. Thank you guys so much, man. Yeah, st stay tuned. It's going to be must-see TV, and uh, it's going to be fireworks. Awesome. awesome. And, uh, wait, bro. And John, again, we can't wait uh, to see it. Not only that, we'd love to have you on again if you'd ever be able. Yeah, hundred percent. Anytime, anytime you guys want me on, it's a pleasure. Awesome. The pleasure's all ours, John. Thank you so much for coming on, and uh, we can't wait to have you on again, man. Enjoy. All right, guys. Have a good day. Have a happy birthday. <laughs> Thank you. Bye, bye. Bye. And that was John the Bull Mac Desi, very uh, intriguing, intriguing guest. I was actually happy to have him on. He's a lot more mellow than I thought he'd be. He's a cool dude, man. I like him. Yeah, I like him too. I like him, and uh, we're definitely going to reach out to uh, Ben Hoffman since I'm located in Texas. I, 
Uh, he he actually wants us to get him on to a podcast. Let's do, yeah, let's do that. I'll, yeah, I'll go to work and do that. Let's do that. Why not? What are we doing? I'm doing nothing. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, that's gonna be a man. That card stays as fun as it was going to, if not more. I mean, that fight was gonna go one of two ways. Donald, uh, the original fight, Donald and Khabib, that was gonna go one of two ways. Either Khabib would certainly try to avoid the striking of Donald and take him down and utilize his grappling to, to get the victory, or Donald was gonna fight those takedowns off and get a knockout, or, or or even win the decision by being able to fight off the grappling and utilize his his expert striking. And now we have a guy who's uh, who's who's trained to do everything well, who's already an expert striker, going against another guy who's again a same kind of the same deal. Trained everywhere, but an expert striker, man. That fight stays just as exciting, if not more, than it was before, in my opinion. So. Oh yeah, definitely. It's it's kind of like a it's almost a mirror match at this point. Yeah, I mean that that it's the same kind of deal. Yeah, yeah. The original match you kind of have fighters with opposing styles, and now you have basically same kind Donald of style. Trump versus John McDessey, or John McDessey versus John McDessey, or Donald Cerrone versus Donald Cerrone. It's the same thing. Yeah, both men are very uh. Wow, this is gonna be a fun fight. And that card still stays great. Um, ob- even even still, I mean, uh, there's been a lot of injuries in the last week, but you know, this one's certainly one that you know doesn't disbenefit us at all uh, as fight fans. So, um, I felt the same way when like Jim Miller was gonna fight. Oh, who was he gonna fight? I think it was Ben Folder or something like that. And then Ben pulled out by injury, and then he got uh, put in by uh, Benil Dariush, who we're hoping to get on our next episode. Uh, ne- um, Later on in the week for Thursday's uh, episode, which would be exciting. Hopefully we get him on. Um, <clears throat> this is our 39th episode, man. We're kind of digging these, stacking these up, aren't we? Yeah, yeah. We're, we're on a roll this year. Yeah. It's like... For all the news that we've gotten this uh, this week, not a lot of them crazy, but we've got some, uh, some, some matchups. Uh, we didn't actually talk about it. But Michelle Watterson from Invicta FC, former uh, Invicta Atomweight champion, um, one of the more uh, popular fighters in the game of women's MMA right now, signing over to the UFC. I was I was ecstatic. I'm surprised I didn't bring it up earlier. But um, she's one of my favorite female fighters in the game right now, so I'm excited to see her come in. And uh, she got her first fight signed. She will be taking on the Ultimate Fighter veteran Angela Magana who has coming off a loss against Tisha Torres at the Ultimate Fighter finale last December. Uh, that's a tough fight for Angela, in my opinion. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I, I'm just going to say it. I don't see Angela winning. I mean, no, I don't see it either. I mean, you know, uh, Michelle Watson is the truth as far as... Uh, <laughs> yeah. She, she, had a belt of, she had the belt in Victor for quite some time. Yeah, definitely. She had a she had a, a terrific fight. If if there's a fight that you want to watch in Invicta and you have a fight pass, go watch this one. Invic- uh, Jessica Panay versus oh, Michelle yeah. Watterson. That was fight of the year Watson. shit yeah, right that was, there. That was incredible. That was one of my favorite fights from uh, last year, and it was one of the best. Um, I'm telling you, no, there was nothing better than that fight. Um, or was it last year? No, it was 2013, huh? Yeah, it was 2013. Um, yeah. That that is one of the best Invicta fights you'll ever see. So if you want to see greatness in, in the cage in a women's MMA fight, that's one that's one prime example. She's one of the most exciting fighters. She's one of the most skilled fighters, definitely, um, in the game right now. I'm actually excited to see her shake things up at strawweight. I mean, uh, people want to say she's undersized, but she's never let that bother her before. She's taken on bigger girls before and beat them. So, and uh, and she has a win over the the chick that's going to fight. Um, in the main event of uh, UFC Fight Night Germany, which will be on Fight Pass for the title against Jessica or Joanna Young Jankic, that's a that's a terrific fight. I obviously that's how I saw that that going down. If Jessica Pinay would have beat Julian and Lima, um, but yeah, go, moving back to the Michelle Watterson fight, I think that uh, you know her her striking was already levels beyond Angela Magana. I mean, if we if if her, if her last few fights are any indication, Angela. Has a lot of work to do on her striking, um, and another thing could have been, you know, she she just seems so s- stooped in the in the striking against Tisha, and it might have been because she was just so worried about getting taken down, um, which she did anyway. She got taken down. Um, so I mean, uh, I mean, because for a woman that trains in Thailand, I have a hard time believing that that's the best her striking can look. <laughs> but um, 
uh, going against a, a woman uh, as talented as Michelle, because obviously Michelle's not just a striker. She's she's obviously very skilled on the ground, has shown it in her past performances. And, um, you know, I mean, she's shown susceptibility there as well. So, I mean, you never know what could happen. But, uh, yeah, I definitely see Michelle, the karate hottie, winning that fight. And uh, I'm excited to see her, uh, see what she can do, shake things up at straw weight, a division that's, uh, I wouldn't even say lacking in depth thus far because, you know, there's still so there's still so much that needs to happen before we know if it's a, if it's a deep pool or not. But, um. <clears throat> Thus far, I, I think that the pool seems pretty full, and uh, we'll see what happens. But I, I like her uh, uh, her addition to the division for sure. Oh yeah, it definitely helps. It absolutely helps the division have a former Invictus champion. With that being said, we also have news, as we've said, um, Joanna Janjacek versus Jessica Panay taking on the uh, main event slot at UFC Fight Night Germany after Alexander Gustafsson. Uh, pulled out of his fight with Glover Teixeira due to injury, a back injury, which is nothing to mess with. Um, I'm actually, I like this fight. A lot of people actually haven't been excited for this fight that I've talked to because of the card that it's on. It's going to be on Fight Pass um, in Germany, which I, I think it it's beneficial for the UFC and, and for Joanna for two reasons. Because, first of all, Joanna is a European fighter. It's going to be in Europe. She has a European fan base. She helps that card. Her being on, I mean, Gustafson being on that card helps just as much. So, I mean, it, it wouldn't have mattered either way. But to be able to replace Gustafson with another European star um, makes sense. It helps. It keeps the ticket sales up. It keeps the viewership right on par still. So, um, and they get a title fight. So, I mean, it's you know, title fight, yeah. yeah, it's a title I, fight. I mean, a title fight. I've seen from, from two angles that people think it's bad that it's on that card because it's a title fight. Um, or that it's you know it's bad because uh, for sillier ass reasons like you know oh it's two women high, high, you know it's dumb I, I don't get involved with those conversations anymore because it's silly um, but you know that's just the thing is that this is going to be a great fight in my opinion Jessica Pene is one of the more game opponents um, in there right now and Pene coming off a victory over Random Marcos at the the finale last December as well um, in a very exciting fight and. Um, and uh, I knew that if she were to beat Juliana Lima, she would have gotten this title shot because she's up there. She's ranked number three. It makes sense. She's a former champion in Invicta as well. Um, and I think that she presents a, a more tactful style against uh, Joanna than, than Carla did in that I believe her striking is better than Carla's. I also believe she has a much more submission-based grappling style. And... Uh, and you know, you know, if 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 she can get the fight to the ground, then good. But uh, I mean, she, she'll have she'll have at least more ways of setting up a, a, a ground uh, a ground attack than Carla would, who just was strictly you know throw 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 a couple jabs here and there, go for the takedown, go on my knees, kind of dig in. Yeah, this isn't a wrestling match. You can't treat it like that. Um, in my opinion, I think that uh, that this this will end up being a much more competitive fight than the, the Carla one, and so. Uh, that's what that's what gets me excited for it. This fight, when is it gonna happen? I need to know the date. I know it's gonna happen in June. Let me see. But uh, tell tell me what you think of that fight. You know, um, I'm trying to look up some size specifics to you know, have more to say about that because I I want to say that uh, Carla's size actually didn't help her in her fight against uh, Joanna, but I think. Uh, I think uh, Jessica Panay could definitely uh, put up a better fight than Carla. Um, and as far as the card itself, and that uh, and that it has Joanna and uh, Jessica Panay as the main event on Fight Pass. Well, and there, you know, there are complaints out there, or people tend to look down on Fight Pass cards. Uh, the intention for Fight Pass wasn't for just uh, having up and coming fighters being on Showcase. There, it, it's really about a geographical location. Uh, fight Pass was meant for fights that were taking place outside of the U.S. and in time zones that don't really line up with uh, the time zones that exist in the U.S. Such as Japan, so, like, Australia, yeah, Europe, Japan, you know, Australia, Europe, all China, and yeah, Antarctica at some point. <laughs> so yeah, that's that's why the Fight Pass exists. So you can have access to uh, fights that are going down in certain time zones that aren't really cohesive with uh, the U.S. Especially for fighters that, you know, 
are signed in the in the UFC. Now, I'll, I'll be the first to say too many fighters are signed in the UFC, but there are fighters signed in the UFC, and uh, they can't fight in the US. They don't have visas yet, whether they can afford. And, and even if they did, who who's to say they can't even afford to fly all the way out here because they fly out on their own. You know, I believe that uh, certain sponsors help with getting tickets, but that's going to go away in a couple months. And, uh, um, you know, with that being said, there are fighters out there in Europe, Australia, Japan. They can't afford to fly all the way out here all the time unless they're, they're top competitors um, making enough money to be able to, 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 to afford to do that. So, I mean, some most of them just stay out there in Europe or, or in uh, Japan or Russia or whatever. And... Um, and so it's important to be able to showcase those fighters that the UFC has too. So that's why they go out and do these events out in Poland and Germany and and uh, you know and other locations out there. So that's that's the thing too is that you know it's it's a chance for these fighters to be able to be able to go out there and, and compete on a, on a high platform like the UFC, the Octagon, and uh, and make some money. You know, because <laughs> I'm sure whenever they go out there, they make a decent amount of money. I mean, just because it's a fight pass card, you don't think it does successful, but it does successful the most fight fi fight uh the most fight night cards out here because you know people will pack that place because they don't get cards on the regular like we do. You know what I mean? So yeah. Um, and, and like I said, I, I, you know, Joanna is a, is a Polish fighter. She's got a European fan base. Uh, it, it was already going to do well with Gustafsson at the helm of this fight card, but now that he's out. But to be able to take uh, one of your European UFC champions and put them right there at, at the main event slot and switch them in for Alexander Gustafsson, I think it keeps, I think it keeps the ticket sales going. It keeps the attendance high. It's going to keep the viewership out there high. And uh, actually, I think it does better because now you have a champion on the card. It's a title fight. Uh, again, keeps a lot of uh, a lot of attention to this card that it'll get, not only from from Europe but from us as well, because we want we, jo Joanna is definitely a, a star to look for, look look at right now because she 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 just had this amazing performance last month or last March has a um, you know has, certainly has a lot of eyes on her, a lot of potential to be a very dominant champion, and we, we definitely want to see if uh, what she can do to these next next few challengers that she's gonna get. Um, and if she can beat him, and uh, Jessica Panay is certainly a game opponent, and I am extraordinarily oh, yeah. excited to see this fight. Um, and uh, like I said, this is going to be one of those fights uh, that you know will definitely do well. It'll probably be one of the more successful fight pass cards you see um, in, a, in a while, you know. And uh, let's look at the card. I actually want to know what else is on there. Let's see. <clears throat> yeah, yeah no. uh, is a little taller. Oh, she's five five. Uh, Yolanda's five six, so um, they won't suffer from the huge height disadvantage that uh, Carla suffered from, that uh, Yolanda took advantage of in that fight. Yeah, and some notable names on there like uh, Mar Marbek Tasanov and uh, and actually Makwan Amir Khani, who uh, had that fantastic seven second finish against Andy Ogle uh, a few months prior. Uh, Derek Brunson, Peter Hallman on the car, Mike Wilkinson. Uh, Tatsuya Kairajiri versus Dennis Sieber. That's a very good fight. Um, Lon Patrick, who we mentioned earlier, uh, will be the one taking on Maribek, Tysimov. Uh, a lot of good uh, good European talent. Oh, no, I'd oh, Lahat. Oh, I love that guy. That guy is a fantastic grappler. Um, versus Nicholas Backstrom, one of uh, Europeans fine or one of uh, Brit Britain's finest grapplers. So uh, a lot of great European talent on this card. I'm excited to see uh, – fact that Derek Brunson, I think, is the only American I see on this card right now. Um, should be a good card. I mean, I'm looking forward to it. Um, especially, man, with such a great main event. And usually these events do very well because uh, the the uh, um, the talent on on these cards are de are are definitely understated, especially by Pagman. <laughs> Shout out to Chris Pagman, by the way. Who couldn't get on here, but uh, he's actually enjoying his time at a at an MMA event tonight. So, uh, which one was? It? Oh yeah, definitely uh, the uh, ECF event. <coughs> this is a uh, yeah, definitely. Oh, we also got some news earlier in the week that Melvin, the young assassin, though I don't know if he's young anymore, <laughs> um, right. he's getting right. cut from World Series of Fighting now. That's what he wanted. So, yeah, that, but now yeah. you wonder where is he gonna go? He's very hopeful he gets on, uh, gets at Bell Bellator, which it might happen, but I can see why it wouldn't. 
I can see why it would certainly because they'll sign anybody with a pulse these days. But um, you know, what what are your thoughts on this? I know that you're very not high on Melvin Gillard, but I mean, what do you honestly think is gonna happen with him? Uh, one of two things: either nobody big picks him up because of how badly he's uh, represented himself as um as an employee as a contracted employee with other organizations. Or, you know, uh, Bellator has not shied away from picking up uh, shady character types. You know what I mean? They, they War Machine. They have like War Machine, mm-hmm. who, has, who is by far a much worse person than uh, Melvin Gillard could ever be. I mean, Melvin Gillard is not a, he's not a criminal. You know what I mean? He's not a, he's not a bad, bad person. He's just not really. It's not a professional. Not, he's not professional. That's, that's really my only knock against him. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, if Bellator would sign a guy like War Machine, who is just a, at his core, bad person, they should, I don't think they'll have a problem with signing uh, Melvin Gillard. And, uh, and Melvin Gillard would fit right into their campaign of, you know, uh, UFC's trash is better than what we have. That's <laughs> kind of what Bellator's been doing as well. Uh, yeah, and we've talked a lot about what Bellator yeah. could do better, and they're not doing it, so. <laughs> yeah. Not doing it, so I'm pretty much. Uh, they just need, they need to go ahead and pay me for that slogan that I just gave them right now. <laughs> <laughs> Trash is better than our treasure. Oh, that man. What you yeah, you know, doing? fucking Stefan Bonner and Tito Ortiz being put above your own title fights. For guys like Kimbo Slice and Kim Shamrock. Man, you want to know something crazy? I believe that fight is going to be over uh, another another yeah, title fight. That's for another title fight. Then yeah, they they are definitely saying UFC's trash is better than our treasure, and that's bullshit. Yeah, I agree. Actually, I want to look at that card just to see how it looks. Bellator, man, you got to get your shit together. But for me, it's it's all about um, you know, I've always. Wanted to see Bellator succeed. I like the idea of a company being out there and 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 being able to you know really keep um, Bellator on the on the yeah yeah you know, I mean competition's good. It really will drive the UFC to do better. But like, I didn't want that to happen. Yeah, I wanted, but will I wanted it? I don't know. World Series to come up and I give UFC runs with them because it keeps them on. It keeps them better. Yeah, definitely. It keeps them put out. It just improves the quality of the sport overall if you have competition mm-hmm. across the organizations. So that's that's what needs to happen. But you don't use your competition stuff <laughs> to make it look yeah. like your card is better. Of yeah, your own brand. Mm-hmm. That's what's not making sense to me. You're, you're supposed to showcase your title, your your prize, your title, your treasure is what needs to be on display. On yeah. the pedestal. Not, like, not what the other guys used to have. That's stupid. That's why when they put that fight over Will Brooks, Michael Chandler, I was just so upset. Yeah, because... like, what, what the hell are they doing? Mm-hmm. Let's see. Okay, yeah. So it's supposed to be over the Bellator featherweight title fight. It was supposed to be uh, between Georgie. Uh, I can never say this dude's uh, name right, but he's one of the best in the game. Car- Karakanya. And he uh, was supposed to t- fight uh, P- uh, Patricio Pitbull Ferreira, which would have been a fantastic fight, believe me, you. Yeah, um, yeah, I mean, both guys are at the top of their game right now, especially Georgie. He's one of the most dangerous featherweights on the planet, in my opinion. And uh, But uh, Georgie got um, uh, injured. He got replaced by Daniel Wachel. Uh But, I mean, come on. Pat- uh, Patricio is also has been such a long-time Bellator mainstay and has always consistently put out excellent performances. Um, he's one of the most exciting guys in the game, and uh, no matter what, even if the, the the original main event is out, Daniel or I mean uh, P- Patricio d- deserves more recognition than being underneath Kimbo Slice. I mean, let's be real, that card is going to do well, but it's in the long run, it's not going to benefit that this guy has a uh, that this guy is not in the main event slot because I mean they deserve some recognition here, and so I mean I hope being on this card shows that. I hope that this will be the last time that they do something like this. Probably not, but um, they're gonna do it. They're gonna do it. It's not gonna stop it. But you know, I mean, just Ken Shamrock. I mean, it's just like it's hard to wrap my head around. It. I mean, it's Ken Shamrock. 
You know, I mean, no disrespect to Ken Shamrock for everything he's done in his MMA career, but it's Ken Shamrock. He hasn't fought an MMA fight in five years. He's been he's been doing all that bare knuckle boxing stuff, and you know, I mean, that's just not the sport that we watch. Not what we're into, and uh, yeah, I don't know. It's just such wildness going on, and honestly, it would. <laughs> It's a matter of because of how long he's been out. Honestly, when Ken was supposed to fight Kimbo, I thought that Ken was probably going to beat Ken, uh, Kimbo. I thought he was going to be able to use good grappling, do basically what Mitchell did to him. Um, uh, but uh, you know, but nowadays I don't even know. I mean, Kimbo has uh, has stayed in 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 combat sports, doing good in boxing, and stayed undefeated before coming back over to MMA. So I don't know. That's a wild fight. You were going to say something, though? Oh, no. I was, uh, I was just saying that Ken Shamrock's 50 years old. 50 Perkins years his old. Board, this doesn't make sense to put that above your title. God, man. Yeah. I'll tell you this right now. I bet you if Dan Severn at 50 would, would beat Ken Shamrock at 50. I mean, Dan's like 55 now, but I'm saying when he was 50, he was still competing, but he, he knew where he was at. He was fighting for, like, King of the Cage and other yeah. promotions all small time and stuff. Oh, uh, man. But I'm telling you, man, it's just a wild thing to think about. I mean, it sucks because it will do well, but that one card will do well. That's it. And I hope that whatever fighters are on that card um, will take the, take the advantage of, of putting on the performance of their life. That way, you know, they're they're able to move forward and, uh, you know, show that they're more important than these 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 old guys who have done things, who have done great things, um, are legends. But you know, I mean, when the UFC wants to put a legend on on uh, on a pay per view, they're fair enough in putting it right underneath the title fight because they know what's up. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. That's the thing. It's not. It's like because it's it's like this. You know, there are some titles that are more important, such as the heavyweight or welterweight or light heavyweight title. Um, and so, uh, <laughs> I just got a text from Chris Shemina asking for help on his MMA fantasies again. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, that's just the thing is that like you know they they would never, despite that importance level of uh, with the, with their titles right now, they would never put Rampage Jackson versus like what. Ch Chael Sonnen or something above a Joanna Janjic, uh Michelle Waterson fight. They wouldn't ever do that. You know what I mean? They wouldn't ever do that. And it's and it's because it's what's fair. It's, it's 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 not even about that. It's just you know those are your champs. Those are the guys that deserve that respect to be at the top of the card. You know what I mean? Yeah. The UFC says this is what you want to see. You want to see the fight for the belt. Mm-hmm. They they don't. I mean, names are names. That's awesome. But you're showcasing the belt. That's what you're supposed to do. Yeah. That's why title fights have always been last on every card in combat sports, if there has been one. If there is one scheduled, the last fight's going to be the title fight. Because that's what you want to see. You want to see the fight for the belt. This is what, this is what the guys fight for. So, exactly. I don't know. I don't get it. That's exactly it. The only time ever, other than, and this didn't happen in the UFC, I think it was like Pride, where they the only time they ever put a title fight underneath uh, another fight was when they thought one fight was like a super fight. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. I get that. I get dream fights. Like, I could, I could see if, uh, if Anderson Silva and GSP five years ago, or within the last five years, Wanted to get together and hook up. I could see that going over a title fight, and I would have no problem. With that. Well, no, you know what the UFC would do? They just wouldn't put a title fight on that card. <laughs> yeah, they, they'd be thrown up to not put a title fight on that one. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I mean, there's exactly a reason there wasn't a title fight at 181, Nick Diaz versus Anderson Silva. It was all about that super fight. Was that fight. Yeah. Yeah, they weren't gonna. Yeah, they didn't put a super fight on there. They didn't put a title fight on that one. And that's a dream match. Mm -hmm. And that's all you need to see. So One or the other. You don't do both. Yeah, exactly. I don't do both. You definitely don't put the title fight under the, you know, a dream match like guys like Tito Ortiz and Stephen Bonner. Who were they? I mean, they're, they they were great. Keyword were. But who are they right now? They're not making runs for any belts. Hell, both of them were retired before they went to belts. Yeah, both of them are retired multiple times before this. <laughs> oh, man. Both of them retired multiple times before this, that fight was made. Mm-hmm. 
kidding me? Yeah, it's pretty wild, man. I mean, I hope Bellator gets it together, but... Get it together, man. They need help. Oh, definitely. Man, I'm, uh... I'm hoping they get it together, and I hope that Patricio puts on the, the performance of his life. I'm a big uh, Pitbull fan of both the Ferreira brothers, um, and uh, I would like to see that Georgie fight. Hope so. Hopefully, uh, he's able to get healthy and get back in there, and 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 uh, Patricio wins. See that fight because if that fight happens, I'll actually be rooting for Georgie. Georgie is one of the most exciting, most well-rounded guys Bellator has, and uh, that's a guy I don't think gets enough attention, man. And, uh, and for obvious reasons, I just feel like they, 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 they don't give attention to where it's due um, or to where it's most important. Like Will Brooks, that dude is like the most underrated guy in the Bellator card. Uh, he finally fought in the main event of a card uh, on the last Bellator card. And an amazing fight against Dave Jensen. That was a terrific fight. And, um, you know, it just goes to show you, man, that guy is a talent and uh, – I would bet you this though, man. Just the way that the way that they get things done. If they did sign Melvin Gillard, they would give him one fight and he'd fight for the belt. And they would promote Melvin more than they would Will, which is sad. That's just what I believe would happen. And I mean, I hope they prove me wrong if that ever does happen. But if they do that, I might have to stop watching the <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, man. I mean, just I, I would watch strictly because I do believe Will would win that fight. Um, yeah. You know, and I'm sad. I'm a, I'm a Melvin fan. I used to be. I mean, I, I want to be a fan. I want to be a fan of him. You know, for anybody that thinks that I'm trying to hate on Melvin, I'm not. Um, I I really, you know, I was a bigger fan before. I'm not so now because you know the way he talks about the promotions that are giving him opportunities. You know, to fight. Um, and you know, just the way he's kind of behaved lately, and backtracking as of late as well in uh, in media, it's just been very odd. So for me, I'm you know I'm just hoping that I can uh, that he's able to get it together here. I mean, if he goes to Bellator, make it count, be respectful, be professional, and uh, if he does fight Will, and if he does win the belt, then uh, you know try to try to you know mature up here and, and really act like a champion. If he can if he can get that done, uh, I personally, if Will Brooks and Melvin fought, I, I would have Will Brooks. The way he's looked lately, he's just been too good. That case coming out the top of his game, I think. He's really, uh, he's getting there. I don't even think he's there yet, but he'll get there soon. He's close. That being said, I think we've hit everything else. Tom Lawler will be making a comeback at the UFC on Fox 16 card against John Volante. He recently just got a a, a wild uh, knockout finish against Corey Anderson. Yeah. It was a great fight, definitely. And um, any other matchups that were made? Let me look. Let's look. Uh, while I'm looking for that, anybody who watched the Manny Pacquiao Floyd Mayweather fight should not be surprised. <laughs> nope. You know, uh, I what's up? I wasn't surprised at all. No, I wasn't either. I, if any, the only thing that surprised me was Manny did not fight his best fight. For sure, that was not the best Manny Pacquiao I've ever seen. But I mean, I guess that's kind of what Floyd was expecting. Um, not only that, I feel like that's also, uh, <clears throat> that's also, um, what surprised me was that Manny wasn't changing up his style. I mean, he started off very successful. It was close up until like rounds halfway through the fight, round six. I honestly had it scored like three to three going, going into the seventh round. So I had it very close. Um, but Manny just would not change up. He would just keep going to the body, come forward, throw a one, two, or one, two, three, if that. Uh, or a jab, and that was it. He wouldn't throw uppercuts. He wouldn't throw overhands. He wouldn't throw any hooks. And his corner was asking for that. I heard it in between rounds. Freddie Roach is sitting there right in front of him telling you, hey, man, okay, I want more uppercuts. Jab, uppercut, jab, uppercut. And even I was calling for that by, like, round six. And uh, Roach didn't even give him that advice until, like, round ten. You know, and I was telling him, I was like, dude, uh, uh, jab, uppercut, it's there. You know, he's especially if he's going to go uh, at the end of the cage, overhand, overhand with your left hand, with your lead hand uh, down. So that way, if uh, if you miss, throw an uppercut and then ba- and then uh, back out so you don't get countered. You know, and uh, that's what I was just calling for. And uh, I wrote, his corner was calling for similar things, and he just wasn't doing them. You know, he wasn't listening to his corner. He just kept with the same uh, game plan, uh, whatever his game plan was. And, uh, you know, he came forward a lot of the fight, I know. And so a lot of people scored 
the fight for Manny barely, but you know, I believe uh, the way I scored it, I had Floyd winning by one round, not six or seven like that biased ass commentary group had it. Um, and man, can you can you talk about you know licking balls during a fight? I mean, that's all that that fucking commentator team could talk about was how great Floyd was. <laughs> when yeah. you know, a first half of the fight, I, I, I you know Manny was doing was putting in work. You know what I mean? The fourth round being the most successful. Cause that's when he landed that crazy. Uh, he had a uh, Floyd against the ropes, and he was landing that that crazy fury against the body, and uh, and the top uh, more so to the body. But then he backs off, and I was just like, "Damn, what are you stopping for?" You know. Um. But uh, you know, first half of that fight was competitive, and then Floyd started somewhat taking over, winning two for every three rounds that would pass. You know. So uh, so yeah, I had it. I had it. I had Manny down by one or two rounds by the end of it. <clears throat> it was certainly a closer fight than the judges or the uh, the commentators uh, said, so I didn't agree with it. But uh, the right man won, I'd say, and uh, Flo <laughs> Floyd got to flaunt all the haters by the end of it. Yeah, that's the sad part. <laughs> <laughs> you got at the top of the ring, cr shoulders crossed. It's like what? You ain't got shit to say. I made 120 mil, probably more. <laughs> you made a lot more than that. Yeah, oh, that's wild, man. It's insane to believe that one of the, you know, I just, I don't know. Floyd, Floyd seems to think he's going to be one of the best of all time, and, you know, that's definitely his prerogative to believe that, but, you know, definitely I think that um, he's certainly one of the smartest fighters to ever compete in the cage, and, uh, you know, he'll certainly go down as one of the best. Will he go down as the GOAT? Not to me. Um and that's tr that's just simply because, you know, he's a guy who uh, doesn't ever handle too much adversity. And it's another thing is that you know, he's not a guy that ever um, won the hearts of many in the sense of how he fought. You know what I mean? His fighting style didn't is not. I mean, what's what makes somebody great is if they're remembered for what they've done. And uh, he may go down remembered for his unde you know undefeated streak. But there's never going to be like that one fight, other maybe than the, the Oscar De La Hoya one, um, that people look back on and go, wow, you know, that was a crazy fight, or it's one of the best fights in history, or it's one of this, it's one of that, you know. Um, uh, he doesn't have that. You know, and, that, and that's not particularly his fault either. It's just, you know, I mean, uh, I wouldn't say the level of competition today was is, be uh, uh, is better or worse than how it used to be like in the 90s or 80s. Right. But but it could be, you know, I mean, you ask some people who are more expert about the entire level of the boxing game than me, and they'll probably say, yeah, it was better back then, and I could, I tend to agree with a lot of them. You know, uh, in the last like, eight or nine years that I've been an MMA fan, I've dropped the ball in boxing, so I haven't seen the competition that there was today, but in the 90s, man, 80s, oh, man, I couldn't get enough of those guys. Um, in today's time, it just seems like there's so much, you know, um, of, of the game that's switched around that you know the the, the fighters that the, the their style is is so uh, what is it way i mean i mean i guess it's more technical you know guys don't go out there and go all billy brawling and stuff but i don't know it's just something different about it that i can't put my hand to and it's mainly because i, I just haven't been into boxing uh I, I used to be way into it as a kid but now i'm, I'm way into mma <laughs> That I, I just I haven't been able to pay attention to the level of competition, but the way that fighters fight these days is way different, and I think that's why I'm such a big fan of of uh, Triple G uh, Golovkin, who is his European boxing superstar right now. Um, yeah, the Russian guy, right? Yeah, well, I think he's Ukrainian, um, but Ukrainian. yeah, um, but yeah, he's just one of these guys that you know keeps that old school mentality, but also I, he seems like a mix of today's guys and 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 back in the day who comes at you, comes forward, but if you try countering on him, he's gonna make you pay for it. Uh, he's got one of the best styles in the game right now, and I think he's like the last great hope if uh, for Floyd if if Floyd will fight him, which I doubt. But um, if there was a fight that I wanted to see, it would between it would be between Floyd and Triple G. So uh, with that being said. I don't really know uh, what else is left for Floyd. I mean, he, it seems like he's going to go down. I mean, if any, it seems like he's got one more fight. He said he'll fight in September. I don't know. We'll see. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. By the way, uh, screw that interviewer who interviewed Manny at the end of that fight. I mean, it seemed like a dumbass. 
I don't know his uh-huh. name, but if I can find out his name, I put him out. I put him out right now. I mean, it's such bad interview. Such a bad interview. First of all, he was like, "Yeah, oh, I thought you lost. The commentators thought you lost. Obviously, the judge thought you lost. Uh, the fans, they might not know what they're talking about, but they they should think you lost." <laughs> it's like, what the fuck wow. is with this guy? I don't. Did you see that interview with Manny at the end? I, I didn't. I was kind of like... Oh, I did. Uh, dude was such an asshole. Uh, there's like a video of it uh, somewhere in the in the realm of Facebook that I got to look for. I'll find it and I'll send it your way. It's so bad. It was so bad. I'm sitting there thinking, who is this dick? It was it was just as bad as that old guy who interviewed Floyd who told him he could kick That's his ass if he was 50. Yeah, uh, if he was 50 years younger. Now, Floyd's a dumbass, but you can't just lose class because you're interviewing somebody who you don't think is classy. I mean, I mean, you can't. I mean, seriously, it was so bad. And uh, Manny's telling Manny gave his thoughts. Manny thought that he won the fight. You know, he 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 was trying to give his case that he moved forward. And then the guy's asking, you know, point blank, right there in front of everybody, you know, why do you think you won that fight when uh, it seemed like Floyd was doing more to win? I'm like, <laughs> it's like just let him talk, man. You know, it's like it's so silly. The interviewer is so bad. I mean, he came off very. Very pricky <laughs> to me. <laughs> I don't know. It was so bad. I didn't. I, I thought it was a horrible interview. I'm not saying I'm any good of an interview myself, but you know, I mean, I could have done a way better job than that, <laughs> in my opinion. Uh, I don't know. But we'll see how boxing goes. I mean, if uh, if if I fans, if you ever want to hear us talk more about it, I will certainly love to come up with any other conversations. I I, uh, I gotta get more fan questions going. I didn't have any prepared for this uh, episode. Not a lot going on, but this weekend, UFC Fight Night 66 goes down. Uh, Mark Hunt versus Steve A. Miocic's uh, card going down in Australia. Um, their time in Sunday, it'll be Saturday for us, so uh, for, for all of us here on the, uh, in North or South America. Um, <clears throat> and so I'm, you know, I'm excited for that, certainly because it's going to be a, a big fight in the heavyweight division. Two of the top five guys, Mark Hunt, Stipe, uh Let's talk about that main event real quick. Who do you got in that one? That's a good one. Um, My heart says Mark Hunt, but... I, you yeah, know. I, I, I want Mark Hunt to win just because I just love the guy. Yeah, you can't, you can't not guy. love that bloke. He's one of the best. But Stipe, man, he seems to be on top of his game these days. He gave JDS a run for his money. And, uh, he did. He gave, he gave JDS a great fight. Definitely. Um, you know, that one really could have gone his way if he had, you know, not taken so many punches himself. Yeah, I mean, that was a war for sure. And uh, I expect this to be, honestly, wouldn't be, the, you know, for as for as much as heavyweight is concerned, you know, I mean, a lot of people say don't expect it to go to all five rounds or all three rounds and stuff. I, I wouldn't be surprised if this does. Two, but these guys are two of the most toughest guys that you can get. In the division, and if and you know, I mean, the finish can happen any either way, but I wouldn't be surprised if this ends up going to the decision in a, in a crazy war because these guys can't stop hitting each other and won't go down. I wouldn't be surprised by that at all. I see a finish. Oh, I see a finish too, definitely. I just also see these guys being so tough that they can't go down. <laughs> you know what I mean? Either way, I think either thing can happen, but I, yeah, I think a finish is more likely for sure. Yeah, I, I see a finish happening. I mean, Mark Hunt still has probably the hardest hands in the game in all of the sport right now. If he lands cleanly on you, man, there's no way you're not going down. Over. Yeah. yeah. If he lands clean, it is definitely over. If he lands clean, you fall down, he walks away to go get a taco. That's how it works. <laughs> <laughs> That's how Mark Hunt operates, man. And he know, you know he's going somewhere because he's like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I've got somewhere to go. I'm trying to eat, so yeah. You, you know John Anik hates interviewing. <laughs> <laughs> Should be Mark interesting, Hunt, though. I hate interviewing with John Anik. Yeah. If I'm going to be honest with you, I actually would love it if uh, Dan Hardy did commentary for this card. I love it when he does commentary. His commentary for the, the Polish fight card was fantastic. I thought he did a tremendous job. Um my own personal opinion, John Anik's all right. He's a decent commentator, but I mean, uh, Dan Hardy really gets you hyped up when he's commentating. I really enjoy his uh, commentating more so than anybody else's, for sure. 
Yeah. Uh, as far as guys that aren't Joe Rogan and, and Mike Goldberg uh, in, the, in the dream team. But, yeah, I mean, like, if Dan Hardy and Kenny Florian started doing commentary together, oh, I'd be so happy. That should be the team. That should be a team right there. They should try that. Dan Hardy and Kenny Florian. Hardy and Florian? Yeah, I think they'd do great. I mean, I mean, uh, mainly because Dan Hardy can get you so hyped up with uh, with when, when, when the action's getting intense. He's he's still able to get loud but break it down pretty crazy but 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 um but he makes it fun you know what I mean and Kenny Florian's such a such a good jits whiz that he can explain things on the, that are going down on the ground you know really well and um, I, I believe Dan is too I mean anybody that trains with any Bravo knows what's up on the ground but you know you know Kenny Florian being the longtime uh, jiu jitsu player and and that being a big aspect of his game when he was fighting you know I think uh, both guys. Uh, would really complement each other. So, I mean, I would love to see that team go to work one day. If they make uh, make it happen, Dana. <laughs> <laughs> With that being said, I think we're out of topics to talk about for this week. Kind of quiet, kind of quiet, following uh, a, a very boxing heavy uh, fight week. So, anything else you want to discuss real quick before we head on out of here? No, not at the moment. Not at the moment. All right, well, ladies and gentlemen, this Thursday on our 30 or 40th, is it our 39th? 40th episode of the MMA Discussion Podcast, we will be joined by a very special guest, Benil Dariush, UFC lightweight fighter, who will come uh, was coming off a fantastic victory against Jim Miller. We're very excited to have him on. Um, we got to say thanks again to John the Bull McDessie for coming on. Terrific guest. Such a chill guy to talk to. Taking on Donald Cowboy Cerrone at um, at UFC 187 in what will be one of the best cards of the year probably. Uh, and that's an exciting fight. That has fight of the night uh, written all over it. And um, I got to say, man, that's going to be a terrific fight. For me, from uh, everybody at MMAD, we want to say thanks again to John for coming on. Uh, you can hit him up at John the Bull McDessie on both Instagram and Facebook, as you heard earlier. If you want to get a hold of me on Twitter, at Nick the Phantom, you can hit me up. Um, if you want to get a hold of our podcast, we have it now available on Twitter, which will be at MMA Discussion Pods uh, or podcast. I don't know how Chris looks at finds it, but just put him MMA Discussion on Twitter, you'd find us. And again, of course, we have our Facebook page, which is growing in numbers. We see it. I'm happy with it. We appreciate you guys that are joining. Get in on the conversations. We have discussions every day uh, with every bit of news that comes out. We appreciate everybody that's uh, actively part of the page. We love you. Um, and uh, uh, what am I missing? Yes, we're available on iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, all available for free on your smartphone devices to download. Um, if you, you want the best available option, it's Stitcher. It doesn't take any of your data away. It just immediately finds the signal for our podcast plays it doesn't take any of your data away um any of your storage you're fine stitcher is the way to go so a soundcloud it's actually easier or it's not as easy to operate as stitcher is but uh you can also get a lot of good music on there and other podcasts that are on there so those are my opinions on those uh what am i missing Sports of Anarchy is still up. I'm still putting out stuff on there. If you definitely want to read, I'm going to put uh, some May articles out in the next few days. So go check those out. Um, <clears throat> if you want to hit a, a get a hold of Jonas, you uh, have to go to Texas and go say hi. Because uh, <laughs> uh, otherwise, you got to message the Facebook page. Yeah. Otherwise, you got to hit us up on the MMA Discussion Facebook page and call him out and say what's up. And uh, other than that, we appreciate you guys. Uh, go ahead and send any fan questions my way for the next episode. We'd love to have some of those ready because I dropped the ball on getting those for this episode. That being said, we love you. Thanks again for listening. Again, thanks to John the Bull McDessie for coming on. And Jonas, thanks for coming on. You got your first interview out of the way. Isn't that fun? Yeah, that was fun. And uh, look forward to doing another one. For sure. Benil Dariush coming up this Thursday. Get at it. Um, we're excited. Can't wait to have it happen. Go on Facebook, MMA Discussion. That's where it's at. We appreciate you guys for listening. Thanks again. Have a good one.